coming up tonight on YCN News. A New England College poll shows New Hampshire voters are more likely to re-elect Democrats in several high-profile races. A car is crushed after getting stuck on train tracks in Charlestown, New Hampshire this morning. And we'll learn about a special group of traveling Rolls Royces. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Thursday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. A New England College poll shows New Hampshire voters are more likely to re-elect Democrats in several high-profile races. With about 40 days to go before the November general election, three women incumbents, all Democrats, are leading their GOP challengers. U.S. Senator Jean Shaheen is ahead of Republican Scott Brown, 50.1 percent to 42.8 percent. U.S. Representative Ann McLean Custer leads Marilinda Garcia 48.9 percent to 38.1 percent. Governor Maggie Hassan also is ahead of Walt Havenstein 52 percent to 39.6 percent. In the first congressional district, a tight race is now even tighter. Former Congressman Frank Ginta has pulled into a dead heat with Representative Carol Shea Porter with both earning 45.2 percent of responses. This New England College poll was conducted over two days, September 19th and 20th, 2014, and conducted using interactive voice response technology, an automated polling system. A total of 1,494 responses were obtained, 715 from registered likely New Hampshire voters in Congressional District 1, and 779 from registered likely New Hampshire voters in Congressional District 2. The margin of error for questions about the gubernatorial and Senate races is plus or minus 2.54 percent. The margin of error for questions about the second congressional district is plus or minus 3.51 percent. For the first congressional district is 3.66 percent. Results of the NEC poll are posted on our blog at wycu.wordpress.com. There were no injuries this morning to the driver of a car that got stuck on train tracks in Charlestown, New Hampshire. The crash happened around 6 a.m. Fog this morning may have led to driver confusion as to where the tracks near Oxbrook Road are, a town firefighter tells YCN News. The driver is not being identified at this time. Oxbrook Road is off Route 12A. A wrecker removed the crushed car from the tracks. Tune in tomorrow when we bring you news of the Claremont City Council's meeting yesterday night and of the closing of the Washington Street Kmart in Claremont. When YCN News returns, a unique traveling group of Rolls Royces passes through New Hampshire and a Perkinsville, Vermont man is charged by police with drug possession. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Rose Spillman. How often do you see a Rolls Royce in use? While traveling back from covering the Commissioner's Roundtable Tuesday, our YCN crew ran across an interesting traveling group and tracked one down at Newbury Harbor. This is a, an annual tour of a group of enthusiasts. We all drive a single model of Rolls Royce that was built between 1907 and 1926 called the Silver Ghost. They're wonderful touring cars and many of us have done this together literally all over the world. We have a couple from California, we have folks from Georgia, we have some people from New England and Pennsylvania. We live outside of Chicago uh, and we have one couple that's riding along from Australia. We're going to be doing a big loop from Wolfboro to Woodstock to Stowe over to Rockland, Maine and we'll end up back in Wolfboro. To find out more about this interesting organization, check out their website, silverghostassociation.com. 
A Rolls-Royce may be a dream car to save for and own. And speaking of saving, it's time for our weekly financial news segment. What if I'm not ready to think about retirement? Um, a lot of times earlier in your career, you may postpone saving for retirement because you may say to yourself, well, I love my job, I love what I'm doing. I might do this well into my 60s or even 70s. But as far as being prepared for the unexpected, it often happens that due to some kind of um, health situation or even maybe your employer decides to downsize at the right time, um, you're not able to work in your career as long as you hoped. So my advice is save for your retirement, even if you think you wanna work forever, because you'll never regret that you save too much money for retirement. <laughs> What if I save more than I need? Okay, well, that's the great thing. If you save more money than you need to provide for yourself in retirement, then you'll be doing a great favor to your, your family or whoever you leave that money to when you're gone. It, it won't be a waste. What can I do to ensure I don't spend all my savings? Having some kind of protection against long-term care expenses, particularly as you get older, can be a huge thing. A lot of people are worried about all of their hard-earned savings end up going to a nursing home someday and they don't like that idea for good reasons. Um, it's a, something that can happen fairly commonly. There's a few things that you can do to protect yourself from that and you should be aware of what your options are if you are considering some type of insurance, for example. Weigh the cost of that with the risk that you're willing to take and see if it's worthwhile for you to look into that. Can you help me prepare for the unexpected? Yes, as a financial advisor, that's one of the things I do is help people think through the financial impact of things that could happen in their life and make decisions ahead of time to prepare as well as they can and make those trade-offs. This is Martha Mackey, your local Edward Jones financial advisor located at 54 Opera House Square in Claremont, New Hampshire, member SIPC. Thank you, Martha. That's great advice. Turning to police news, a November 4th date in Windsor District Court is scheduled for a Perkinsville, Vermont man charged by police with drug possession. 43-year-old Chad Cushman is in police custody following an investigation that began with a child welfare check at the South Central Vermont home. Authorities say various drugs were observed in plain sight by state police and a DCF worker who came to the home on behalf of several children. On Monday, police found several marijuana plants, pills, and bath salts at the home at 1439 Gravelin Road in Perkinsville. Police cited Cushman for growing marijuana and possession of a hallucinogen. Several firearms were removed by police from the home around 11.30 p.m. Additional charges are possible. There is no word about the children's welfare. A Cornish police officer was in the right place at the right time when he saw a man being dropped off outside a vacant home on Center Road. Officer Eric Brand saw the man come out of a freestanding building on the property. Brand called out to the man, first identifying himself as a police officer. The man took off and ran into the woods. It was just after 2 p.m. Officers from Cornish and Plainfield came to help along with New Hampshire State Troopers and the Sullivan County Sheriff's Department. Police found the man hiding in a culvert that goes under Center Road. 31-year-old Philip Borsick of Keene, New Hampshire, was taken into custody and charged with several crimes, including being a felon in possession of a deadly weapon. Borsick also is charged with criminal trespass and resisting arrest. He is currently being held at the Sullivan County House of Corrections in Unity for lack of $10,000 cash bail. Anyone who may have witnessed this event is asked to contact Officer Eric Bran of the Cornish Police Department. The number is 603-543-0535 or by email at cornish.police at comcast.net. It's a natural showcase of color. We're talking about the foliage season now underway. YCN News thanks Tiffany Sabato for her fall foliage picture. Amidst your daily travels, take a moment to check out the tree's shades of red, orange, yellow, and green still holding on. You can share your photos and videos of this spectacular season with us at news at ycnnow.com. 
and Vermont, it's early in the foliage season for southern and southeastern Vermont. Across the Connecticut River into New Hampshire, along Route 12A especially, a great range of colors are on display. Many fall fairs are happening, so why not plan your weekend travels around the foliage season? For trip suggestions, go online to vermont.com or visit nh.gov. When YCN News returns, we'll join Upper Valley Chronicles and Holmes, who met with Bob Lurby and Scott Morris from the Live Free or Die Riders. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to sports. Thanks, Rose. Tonight we'll have patchy fog after 2 a.m. with partly cloudy skies and lows in the 40s. Tomorrow morning will be foggy until 10 a.m. Then we'll have sunny skies with a high of 71 degrees. Friday night we'll have mostly clear skies with calm winds and lows around 47 degrees. Saturday we'll have sunny skies with highs in the 70s and calm winds. Saturday night we'll have a low of 56 degrees with clear skies. You can see that there are some clouds over our region today. Once the clouds move away, we should have clear skies this weekend. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. Tomorrow morning in Enfield, New Hampshire, the Shrine of Our Lady of La Salette will hold nativity exhibits from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. In South Ruralton, Vermont, the creation of the Commons celebration will begin at 5 p.m. In New Hampshire, the Sunapee Methodist Church will hold a coffee house featuring Craig Worth at 7 p.m. In Hanover, the Chateauk Observatory will hold an astronomical observing at 8 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Turning to high school sports, we have some girls field hockey game results to report. Yesterday, Lebanon faced Plymouth. The Lebanon girls defeated their opponent with a 5-0 final score. Lebanon's Emily Perryman made three goals which contributed to the team's success. The Lebanon Raiders record now stands at six wins and one loss. Another exciting game featured Woodstock and Rutland. The game went into overtime, leading to a tied game at 2-all. Woodstock is set to play against Mount Anthony School on Saturday. Thanks, Matt. When YCN News continues, we'll join Capital Connections' John O'Connor, who met with New Hampshire AFL-CIO President Mark S. McKenzie. The YCN News continues in a moment. 